So our speaker today is uh, Heather. Uh, Heather is the co-founder of Artifacts, Heather Nichols Nickerson, I should say. Uh, she served as the chief growth and sh and strategy officer of Red Five Holdings Incorporated and president of Red Five Privacy Labs LLC. While at Red Five, she drove corporate growth, led to corporate brand and service line marketing, and pursued new entrepreneur entrepreneurial lines of business. Excuse me. Uh, she has a lot of interesting knowledge. Her business is really fascinating. So I'm going to go ahead and disappear and let Heather get started and tell you all there is to know about artifacts. Great. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm thrilled to be here today. Um, thank you for the introduction. And I look forward to answering your questions and talking about how we're going to tell our stories about the many lives we've lived over the years. Um, by way of additional background, I do have a background in privacy and security. I spent nearly two decades working with the U.S. government, along with um, a private security firm running and growing that firm. Um, during COVID, I took a hard look at what was my passion, and that really was, you know, helping families tell stories, helping families share their history, helping families document their history. By way of background, I am a 12th generation Nickerson. Um, my ancestors were the first European settlers on Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Family history, stories, and preservation are a really big part of our lives. So during COVID, I decided it was time to take a big change in my career path and started Artifacts to enable anyone everywhere to capture, preserve, and share their histories, stories, memories, and value behind all of their stuff. And when I say stuff, it could be old photographs to family heirlooms. I'm going to jump right into the presentation today. We are going to share my screen. I'm going to do a part presentation, but also part live demo. And I'm going to invite you all to follow along during the live demo portion of this. I will make the slides available after the presentation, and Elizabeth has noted that they'll be available to you all as well. So if you feel there's a lot of information we're covering and you're frantically trying to take notes or remember stuff, don't worry. Again, the session will be available on the Allen County Public Library's YouTube site, and the slides will be available. And the handout we have is simply a really fun checklist to help you get started and to hopefully give you some inspiration. So with that, I'm gonna dive into our presentation today. We're gonna to talk about documenting the many lives you've lived using our tool, Artifacts. So with that, I wanna go over quickly how we're gonna spend the next hour. I'm gonna introduce what Artifacts is and talk a little bit about why Artifacts. Why is it important to have this resource to use when telling your story and documenting your family history? We're then gonna dive into a live demo and talk about or actually show you how to tell your story. And again, you can follow along or simply watch the presentation and then do it at your own pace at home. I'm also gonna highlight some key resources and features we have dedicated for genealogists. If you've been to the Roots Tech Conference over the past couple of years, you might've stopped by our booth and seen us. We have a lot of really great tools to help you capture, preserve, and share those family histories, the stories, even the family lore. So I'm going to highlight some of those features that you may not be aware of if you're just simply browsing our site, but if you dive deeper into artifacts, you'll learn to love. And then I'll also stop and leave plenty of time for Q&A as well. So with that, let's jump right into the status quo. How many of you have been faced with a situation like that? Or maybe it's not the garage, maybe it's an attic, maybe it's a basement, maybe it's a spare bedroom that is no longer a bedroom, but a makeshift storage unit. By way of my background and my history, I started Artifacts after losing my mother very unexpectedly. She was our family keeper. And as the eldest and only girl on Cape Cod, Massachusetts in my family, I inherited 6,000 square feet of stuff. So it wasn't just a garage, it was a house full of stuff. And because a mother passed away very young and she was the family keeper, I didn't know what was what. 
I didn't know what the history was, what the stories were. And I'm sure my mother might have told me at some point when I was in my teens or my 20s. But let's be honest, I wasn't fully listening and I didn't fully understand it. But now that I have my own family, those histories, those stories take on even more importance. So for me, that was the genesis of artifacts. How do we create an easy to use platform that enables you to tell your story privately and securely share your story and add to it over the years? So let's talk about stuff. If you're faced with this situation, you have a ton of stuff. You, you or your family could be wondering, what in the world is all of it? You could be wondering, where is, maybe it's a baseball card collection, maybe it's a stamp collection, maybe it's, you know, Nana's needlepoint cushion. Where is that stuff? Maybe you're thinking, oh my gosh, if you're set to inherit all this stuff, you're going to, the family keeper torch is being passed from matriarch and patriarch onto you. You may be wondering, what am I supposed to do with it? And then of course, there's the question of, is any of it valuable? Stuff can't talk. Stuff can't tell us what it is. Stuff can't tell us why it matters. And stuff can't tell us, is it valuable? And when I say valuable, it's not just financial value. It could be heart value. That was a really big piece for us, for my family, was the heart value in some of the things my mother left behind. So in teeing up the issue, the status quo is really tough on stuff. Status quo is also really tough on stories. The image on the left-hand side of the screen is a screenshot of all the photos, not even all the photos, some of the photos on our phones. We walk around these days with these amazing cameras and mini computers in our pocket. And it's so easy to grab a photo. But what happens when you have 10,000 photos, 20,000 photos, 30,000 photos? How do you know what is what? And how do you know which of those photos matter? More importantly, how, how are your family members going to know? Photos can't talk the same way stuff can't talk. And if you dive into one of those photos, if you, if you pop on the photo, you can pull up the metadata. It can tell you when the photo was taken. It can tell you the size of the photo. It still can't tell you the story behind the photo. No one can tell you that. Not even chat GPT. We still, we as humans, as members of our families and our communities, we're still the only ones that know the stories behind the photos we take. And the other reason sometimes stuff, the status quo is tough on stories, we inherit a lot of family items. It could be photos, it could be heirlooms, it could be documents. But again, none of it can talk. None of it can tell us why this matters and how they're connected. The photo on the right is a snapshot of some of the items that after going through my mother's estate, I didn't know what was what. Again, she was our family keeper, and part of our family story was lost with her because none of us knew who were in those photos, why they mattered to us as a family, or even when were they taken. And sure, there's ways to research that, but still, the story, the story was lost. The status quo is also really tough on you all as genealogists. You're spending a ton of time researching and using different tools and software available to you. And you have charts and trees, and you make meticulous notes and documents. Probably have amazing file folders and filing systems, but how will your family know what is what if they themselves are not genealogists? How will they know what matters and what is important? This is why we built artifacts. We wanted to make a really easy to use, simple and fun platform to let you tell your story, share it, preserve it, and add to it over time. I wanna just quickly talk about some of the key components of artifacts and then jump into a live demo where you'll get to, again, follow along, create artifacts as we go, or simply listen and get inspired. So first and foremost, what is Artifacts? We are a technology platform, which is a really fancy way of saying we are a website, artifacts.com, that's A-R-T-I-F-C-T-S.com. And we also have an app, 
available both for Apple and Android devices. When you're using artifacts, it's really simple. We start with an object. It could again be an old photo. It could be a family heirloom. It could be anything you want it to be, but you pick an object, you take a photo. You can also add audio and video. You can add a story. And when we say story, it could be five words. My mother gave me this, end of story. It could be 500 words. We even have some of our members who have chosen to write their life story, their memoir using artifacts. And they structure each artifact as a chapter or a sub chapter of their memoir. So there is no limit to how long your story can be. But if you, if you hear the word story and you suddenly get worried, well, I may not be a great writer. I don't know how to write a story. That's okay. With artifacts, you can start really simply and always add to it over time. So once you have your object, you've added a photo, video, or audio, you have a story, you click save and you're done. You now have an artifact. This on the screen here in the right-hand corner is an example of an artifact. This is a photo of my co-founder's great aunt, Muriel. Muriel was Rosie the Riveter, except for she was actually Muriel the Welder. During World War II, she helped her country by welding the tails of airplanes. Now, Muriel is 97 years old, and she has moved repeatedly. She's downsized. She is now living in a small one-bedroom apartment. Some of the things she's kept from her life story include the goggles that you see on the screen, the pamphlets from her time being a welder, and a photograph of her that was used in the pamphlets and brochures to recruit young women to this profession during World War II. Muriel's family never knew this story about Muriel. No one ever thought to ask her. They knew that she was a welder. She welded items for her community, like the local school and artist workshop, but they simply thought it was a hobby. And I'm sure some of you can relate to this. That greatest generation, the folks that went through and served in World War II, may be a bit reticent to talk about their histories and that part of their life. And if you don't ask, or maybe you don't ask the right questions, you may never know the story. So my co-founder sat down with her great aunt last year and asked her, what's the story behind the goggles? And with that came this beautiful artifact, this beautiful story, family history that they were able to document together, including the video of Muriel telling part of the story and showing how she did some of the welding that was then privately and securely shared with the entire family. So that is how you can put together bits and pieces, stories, photos, videos, audios, documents to create a meaningful and lasting legacy. I wanna quickly show different components of an artifact. So we call this the anatomy of an artifact and I'll show you more in the live demo, but just to let you know what some of the key pieces are. When you create an artifact, this is where you upload the media images. It could be photo, video, audio. It's all right there. You can flip back and forth. We then have the title. You can name your artifact, whatever you want it to be. We have who created it. In this case, my co-founder. We have the story. And again, I mentioned it could be five words. My mother gave me this. In this case, it's a really long story because Muriel had a lot to say. We then have our categories and tags. And we're gonna talk more about this later in the presentation. But when you make an artifact, you get to pick your categories. You can also make custom tags. We know that our friends in the genealogy spaces love using the custom tags because you can use first name, last name, you can use family name, you can do time frame, you can do geographic location, you name it. And I'll show you some of my own examples of this as well. You can also attach documentation. And the beautiful thing about documentation, if you're doing all that research, right? If you've got the status quo, you've got the files, you've got the documents, you've got family trees, you've got documentation galore. Fabulous, attach it to the artifact. So whoever inherits those goggles from World War II, from Muriel the Welder, will now know more about Muriel. Her story goes with the goggles. 
And then in the artifact, you have the details. You could click to expand this and see all the details behind the actual items. And then down here, you have the additional functions. So once you made the artifact, right, you can go back and edit anytime. You can download. If you are someone who likes to keep track of a you know, three ring binder, you can download all the information, Excel spreadsheet, PDF, a variety of file formats, choice is yours. You also have the QR code. You can print off a QR code or use your QR code stickers, pop it on the back of say a photo frame, or in this case, pop it on the box where the goggles are. You can scan the QR code, up pops this entire story, the artifact. Again, connecting the physical with the digital. And then we also have, I wanted to highlight one feature is called the what's it worth button. If you're artifacting family heirlooms, or maybe you've inherited family heirlooms, or you're gonna pass down family heirlooms, this is a great feature where you can get a free valuation from our partner heritage auctions. There's no obligation to sell the item, but it simply lets you know, hey, grandpa had a stamp collection. Was grandpa really good at stamp collecting and it's worth $20,000? Or was it simply a hobby and grandpa's stamp collection is worth $200? Once you know that, you can make a very informed decision of what do you do with grandpa's stamp collection. All right. Having said all that, I also want to note you can always share privately, securely the artifact. I'm going to jump into our live demo portion of this presentation. So I'm going to escape out of here and switch screens over to artifacts. And again, please pop any questions you have into the Q&A. Everything I'm gonna show you on this live demo is from our website, artifacts.com. You can also access all of these features again on our mobile app. And on the mobile app, we also have a talk to text feature. So if you're someone who does not want to type in that long story, that's great. You can talk to text it in the mobile app. It makes it really simple to do. So having said that, I've already logged into my account. If you go here, if you go to Artifacts for the first time, the green button is going to say get started for free. So if you want to follow on during this presentation, make your own Artifacts as we go, feel free to make a free account and follow along. If not, sit back, watch, enjoy, and then feel free to try it out later this week or weekend or when you're with your family. Choice is yours. So I've already logged on to here. I am going to pop over to my account. So when I'm in my artifacts, I can go to my artifacts collection and I can see my latest artifacts. I am going to, since this is all about telling your family history, documenting the many lives of you, I am going to pop into my timeline. Remember I said we have custom tags. So I have over 350 artifacts. Before this presentation, I made a tag, the many lives of me. And I tagged very specific artifacts with that tag so that we could today quickly go through a bit about my story and hopefully inspire you to tell and share your story. So I'm gonna go here, this is our timeline feature. You can view this when you create your artifacts, you just view it by clicking timeline view. I'm going to quickly invert this from newest to oldest to oldest to newest. So one of the great features of artifacts is being, again, because it's multimedia, because it is digital, you're able to edit, to share, to interact with it. You get to tell your story in a very fun and unique way. So I wanted to just show you a quick highlight of some of the key moments in my family story, in my history, that I know I now have a teenage daughter. I know how I tell her all of my stories. Is she listening? Probably not. But I know for a fact that one day if something ever happens to me, she will have this as a resource to help guide her and help her understand the many lives I've lived over the years. So in, for this purpose of this presentation, I started with my one-year-old photo. I can click into the artifact. I'll show you what some of these artifacts look like. I created this artifact in case my daughter ever came across this photo and wondered, that's my mom? I think it's my mom, she's got red hair. What is this photo of? This artifact simply explains, it's my one-year-old self. Um, you can see here the details that as much as I know them, the occasion, how old is it, country. And then in the future, this is one of our features that enables you to give your family a roadmap of what happens next. 
and I'll show you how to create these artifacts in just a moment. But I want to show you what some of the finished product looks like before jumping into how to actually do it. So this is the example of my one-year-old self. That's where my, my timeline starts, right? I'm going to go back up to now 1983. Here's a photo of my father and me. This is one of my favorite photos. Um, something about the color, the season, just the laid back nature of this. If my daughter came across this photo, who knows? She would not know the story behind it. She would not know it matters so much to me. She might keep it. She might toss it. I have no way of knowing, but I know now that I've artifacted it and told the story and shared the details, chances are she will keep it because now she knows there's something behind this photo. It mattered to my mother. Um, I'm going to close out of here. Keep going up the timeline. Um, I had, oops, I had growing up, I had horses, my favorite pony. I have a photo of my mother, my brother, and me, and our the house that hey, I. Hey Heather, um, yeah. we can't see your screen anymore. We're just seeing your your PowerPoint. Oh my gosh, that is so strange. Okay, yeah. Let me stop sharing. Yeah. Where were you able to see it when I started, Elizabeth? Um, I thought I was, but. Some people are saying that they didn't see some of these pictures. Oh my gosh. Okay. I just stopped sharing. Let me try this again. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay, great. I'm sorry for folks if you weren't able to see it. I don't know what happened. All right. I was just describing the one-year photo and the, the artifact behind it. My father and me sitting on our front doorstep. I'll quickly click into the artifact so you could see it. Do, 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 do. there's the story there's the details um my daughter again if she came across this photo with no context whatsoever since the photo can't talk she might have kept it might have tossed it now that i've artifacted it and shared the history and shared the artifact with her with my family you can see the people i've shared it with chances are it's going to live on in our family for generations to come it's simply not going to be tossed aside because no one knows what it is so moving on up my timeline this is an artifact I made, and yes, it's a family photo, but the purpose of this artifact was actually to talk about our living room, which may sound really, really silly, but it was a very memorable, the way that my mother had decorated it and just the memories of that space in our house. I wanted my daughter, who never actually got to see this house, understand where I grew up. So yes, I artifacted a, a photo of my mother, my brother, and me in our living room and gave my daughter a long story about this house and this was our living room back then. I want to quickly pop up, jump over to high school, right? I was in the student newspaper. Um, I was one of the editors. I loved writing. I loved storytelling. And in my senior year, we had part of our yearbook was publishing or was to publish a work of literary arts. So I artifacted a poem that I wrote called A Poem of People. And I shared this with my daughter and my husband, and they both thought it was hysterical. They were like, oh my gosh, this is, my daughter said, this is so you, mom. And my husband said, I think to this day, those words still ring true. So it's one of my favorite artifacts from, let's face it now, 30 plus years ago. But again, it is part of my life, part of my story. And had I not artifacted it, my daughter might have come across this poem in a bin and been like, I don't know what it was in the trash it goes or in the recycling bin it goes but since i've artifacted it she now knows the story and the history behind it scrolling on down in college i was a surfer best friend and i we lived to surf i grew up in cape cod massachusetts and this is a really long story you can see here it's not five words it's not even five paragraphs it goes on ways but again my daughter would come across these photos she would have no idea well she might know that was me she wouldn't know that was my best friend, Susan. And she certainly wouldn't know that was our friend, Gary, who taught us how to surf. So again, it's putting those, connecting those dots, telling those stories so the next generation knows what it is. Moving on down, part of my life, I'm an avid hiker. And my father and I did part of the Appalachian Trail together, the New Hampshire portion. So I artifacted that with photos of different peaks that we were on. Again, if my daughter came across these different photos, she may or may not know what we were doing. But with the captions, I can tell her. And then I can also link to the artifacts where we took her 20 years later 
we took my daughter on the same, well, one portion of the same hike that we did. And they're linked together to tell the family story and history. You can see here, same view, just one more generation of the family together. So again, telling the pieces and connecting the dots, the many lives you've lived. I want to quickly scroll down. I then get into some of my professional career and professional achievements. This is a great one. 2009, I served in Afghanistan and I received a Distinguished Service Award for my time in country. This is a small medallion. It's probably twice the size of a quarter. There is no financial value to this whatsoever. If something happened to me, my daughter had to go through my stuff. My daughter may or may not keep this. She may not even know what it is or why it matters. But since I've artifacted it and told the story, she now knows. She also has the detail. She also knows she can, I printed the QR code and I attached it to the artifact. So when she picks up the artifact, there's a QR code right there on the underside of the medallion. So if something happened to me, she could scan the QR code, up pops this artifact, all the details. She now knows the story. She now knows about my service in Afghanistan. Scrolling down, I'm going to close with one of my one of my favorite ones. Um, always makes me smile. So I was a hiker. I got into running later on in my life. I ran my first half marathon right before I turned 40. And I artifacted this. I artifacted our times. I artifacted all the details of it. Again, my daughter may find these photos one day and be like, I didn't know mom ran a half marathon. It's a fun part of my story. And now she knows. She knows those details. So I'm going to close out here. Just this is again, this is meant to show you how you can tell your story, especially using our timeline view feature. I'm going to show you now how to create those artifacts. If you've got photos at home or items that you're waiting to add to an artifact, let's dive into how to do that now. And I'm just inverting newest to oldest. So if you're in our app or in our website, you can click plus to add an artifact. You could also do it off of your homepage, new artifact. But let's click in here. If you're going to tell your story, and after I show you this part, we're going to jump into very specific questions and details to include kind of a four-step process. But I want to show you technically how to do this with an artifacts. This is what it looks like when you go to create an artifact. This is right here where you drop and drag your files or upload. You can, we built in custom integrations to some of the most common areas where files are located. You can also drag and drop, but you can add video, photo, audio, you name it. So all those photos, I was just showing you some of the videos, that's, I upload them here, they're attached to the artifact. This is where I name my artifact. So in that photo of my one-year-old self, that was the name. The category, this is where you can choose any number of categories. When we're talking about the many lives I've lived, oftentimes life's moments are the key categories. And maybe it's firsts or awards, or maybe it's heirlooms. Maybe there's photographs. A lot of our genealogy friends love artifacting old letters and cards from members of their family many generations ago. That is where you would find those categories in here. We then have right here, description or story. This is where you put in those five words, my mother gave me this, or as you saw in some of my artifacts, those much longer descriptions. And if you're ever at a loss for what to say, simply click on the light bulb and we give you some story prompts and some ideas. We also have country of origin. You may be scratching your head, why am I being asked for country of origin? We've got a surprise for you. Coming later this year, you'll be able to create a map, a world map of all of your artifacts. The same way you have your artifacts in timeline view, you can see a timeline of your life, you'll be able to see where did this stuff come from. So if you happen to be the family keeper, like my mother was, and you're tracking artifacts from your, maybe your German family heritage, or maybe you've got ancestors that from Australia or New Zealand, you'll be able to map those artifacts on a world map. If in the case, some of the photos of my artifacts, just I can pick unknown, not applicable, or the US is the easy default. And then in the future, I shared this field where a lot of the stories I have tagged with the many lives of me, I know in the future, keep in the family. It doesn't matter to me which of the children get, the, get those photos or get that item, but I want it to stay in the family. 
if there is something specific, I want to go to a specific child. If I want to make that roadmap for my family of all those tangible assets, so they aren't staring at the garage full of stuff we saw in the image when we started the presentation, I can click bequeath and then first name, last name, relationship, email address. It's really easy. Same thing. If you want to donate to charity, you can name the organization and then put in the contact details to make it really simple. So if you're planning to donate some of your historical items, different historical associations, or maybe even local or regional museums, it's a great way of letting your family know, this is where I want this item to go. And here I mentioned the custom tags. This is where you can create your own tags or use existing tags. Some of my favorite tags, I have one called Mom's Estate. And this is these are all the items right here that I inherit from my mother's estate. I'm gonna cancel out of this. Um, so I'm not actually saving this artifact, but that is, if you click save, you now have a new artifact. I am going to stop sharing the live demo and go back. We're gonna walk through those questions to really help you articulate the many lives you live. So you saw how the technology platform works. Let's dive into how do you tell the story of many lives of you? So if you are at home and you're doing this real time, great. Let's start with the obvious. And if you're pleased to do this later, this is hopefully food for thought to give you inspiration. So look around, pick a photo. Oftentimes framed photos are great starting points. You paid money to have that photo framed. What is it a photo of? Who's in the photo? When was it taken? Where was it taken? There's so many questions to ask. And remember, photos can't talk. Or maybe pick a professional memento, something you acquired during your working years. Or maybe a travel memento from a favorite trip you took. Or maybe a family heirloom that you've inherited. But start with an object. Pick something, pick anything, and say something true about it. This may seem really contradictory, like, well, of course I'd say something true about it. But oftentimes people, people don't know the stories behind the stuff we have. And sometimes it's not obvious to others. If you recall that medallion I received for my service in Afghanistan, my daughter would have absolutely no idea what that was other than a heavy piece of metal that looks like a coin that's on my desk. So start with something true and then add what makes the item special or unique or valuable to you? In the case of a framed photo, why do you love that photo? Why is that photo framed? Why, out of the, let's say, 30,000 photos we have on our phone, why did you choose to print off that photo? What makes it special? That right there, if you do just those two things, you have now shared something meaningful about some object in your life that chances are your family may not know. You're starting to tell a bit about your story. And if you think about this, if you do this, if you gave yourself a homework assignment, right? And you said, all right, for every decade old I am, I am going to pick one object from each decade and do just that. I'm gonna say something true about the object and why it matters to me. Depending on your age, you could have half a dozen, maybe even more artifacts and stories and moments that you can share with your family. And you very quickly see how you can start building your timeline of the many lives you've lived. I want to note when you were in this process and you're starting to write about this object, you write the story. Don't be afraid of the story. You can add video and audio. Maybe you'd rather tell the story and have your grandkids listen to your voice telling the story or have them watch you in a video telling the story and describing it. We have one Artifacts member who inherited her family's antique and vintage kitchen gadgets. You know, those old cheese grinders or an old hand crank whisk and egg beater. Her grandkids have absolutely no idea what those items are or even why they were used. And what she did is she artifacted the items, included a photo of her grandma, or in some cases, her great grandmother with the actual item, and then included a video of her using the item to show the grandkids, this is how we used to grate cheese. 
or this is how we used to whip cream. And it was amazing. She, she gave us, she wrote in, sent us an email, gave us feedback and said it was amazing. She could have told the stories to the kids over and over and their eyes would have glazed over. When she created the artifact, she privately shared it with her family, all of her kids and grandkids. They loved it. She got so many calls and texts and saying, I never knew that. And then the grandkids also remembered it. They remembered the video and they thought it was so funny seeing how, you know, grandma and great grandma used to beat eggs. So when we say story, think about story in the broader context of the details, the memories, maybe the things that make you laugh. It does not have to be a perfect story, especially when using artifacts. We can always go back and edit or add details down the road. And remember, when you're in artifacts, if you're stumped about what to write, click on that yellow light bulb next to story, the story field, and up will pop questions to help guide you. All right, you've started. Let's just say you've got six decades and six different artifacts over the many lives you've lived. Now you want to add more details. Fabulous. Let's talk about how to tell that longer story and add in those details. I think one of the most important pieces that I often see missing when working with families in our community is the why does this matter? You can have all the historical and factual details about an item, but if you haven't told your family of why this item matters and why it's important to us as a family or important to me as an individual, that's the key piece missing. So as you start telling a longer story in your artifact, make sure you add in the why. Why does this matter? Why is it important to you? You can expand on all the W's, the who, what, when, where, again, why. But let's take an old photo, for example. Again, photos can't talk. This is a great exercise to do if you have an old framed family photo. Or maybe it's one of your old photos. Do you have a photo of you as a baby or in grand, like grammar school, or maybe from college, the old college days? Um, tell the story behind that, but include the five W's, the who, the what, the when, the where, and of course the why. Why was the photo taken? Why were you wearing that outfit? But also why does it matter to you? And then think about as you get through this, you work your way through these objects. What's the connection? Is this object, is the artifact connected to other items or other stories, other parts of our family? And if you recall from the live demo, for me, when I artifacted that hiking trip, those photos, my father and I did summiting all those mountains. And then we had, we took my daughter when she was um, finally old enough to do the first one. We had that family photo in the same exact spot, the same exact view. And I was able to connect them. So my daughter, when she looks at those artifacts, she can connect the dots herself and know these two photos are related. And here's the story behind this one of mom and grandpa. And here's the story with me in the photo, literally in the picture now too. When you're telling that longer story, don't forget that in the future field, give your family a roadmap. This is the very practical side of artifacts, right? As genealogists, you're probably doing, again, a ton of family history and research, and you're documenting it. Don't let your stuff become the next generation's history project or family research project. Tell them what happens to it next. Who in the family is going to get it? Or if you don't want to make that decision yet, that's okay. Tell them, great, I want this to stay in the family. Keep it in the family. Or you want to donate it to the historical society. Or maybe you want them to sell it and use the money to, to do something with it. But don't leave out the in the future. Give your family a roadmap for what happens next to help ensure that your legacy and your story lives on for generations to come. And last but not least, given my background in privacy and security, I do want to note that as you're telling your history and your story, and you're documenting the many lives you've lived, take care of those details. You want to balance the details with the privacy. You want to ideally avoid, if you're going to be publicly sharing or sharing with a wide audience, maybe you're going to share the artifact and story with cousins and cousins and cousins, 
maybe avoid specific dates or account numbers, social security numbers, maybe even like some personal information, or sometimes it may be an embarrassing story that only the immediate family knows, and you may not want to share it wide and far with others. So just think about as you're getting excited and sharing and telling your story to balance the privacy with the details you put into the story. All right, before we pause for q and I do want to quickly highlight the five features that we built for our genealogy friends and that we've received feedback on over the years, how much they love it when telling their story. And I will just note, we received again, second year in the row, Family Tree Magazines, we're, we're one of the top new genealogy technologies for 2024. And we believe it's because of some of these features. So first up is timelines. You saw my timeline or you saw a small piece of my timeline. But when you're creating your story, telling the many lives of you, your timeline view is a great way to show and interact with your family. We've had, I actually saw it firsthand at Thanksgiving, my husband, he shared his timeline with all of the kids. And it was fascinating to watch the kids be like, wait a sec, that's, you were in the Civil Air Patrol? That's why you were so strict with us when we were in high school. It was, it was amazing. Some of the stories and histories that they never knew about him, he walked through the with the kids, his timeline. And it was fascinating, the conversations that came out that way. So timelines are reinvented for you. You can tell your story based on your objects, be it photos, heirlooms, documents, you name it. We also, with artifacts, and I think you saw this feature, the connections, just like in social media, you can interconnect stories and artifacts. Simply when you're making that description, you're typing up that story, use the at symbol and link it to another person, to another artifact, even to one of your private sharing lists or circles. That was how I was able to link the two artifacts of my father and I hiking when I was in my 20s, and then my father and I and my daughter when I was in my 40s doing the same hike. So you're able to interconnect. It makes literally connecting the dots, connecting the stories much easier. We also have limitless custom tags. And I think you saw this in the live demo. This is where, again, I have a tag that is the many lives of me. And this is where I tell my life story. I have a tag for mom's estate. I have a tag for mom's recipes. I love, we're a big part of my mom's history, family history was all the recipes, the traditions at the holidays. I've artifacted her recipes and shared with immediate family, with cousins, you name it. But I have a tag just for that. And you can see here how genealogists may use the tags. Maybe you're tagging family members. Maybe you're tagging different branches of the family, different generations. But there's no limit on how many tags you can use in a single artifact. And of course, because they're custom, they're viewable only to you and who you choose to share them with. You can also share smarter. We think this is really important when we designed and built artifacts. It enables you to privately share family, friends, you name it. You can also, when you privately share, choose to attach the documentation. So the documentation is already in your artifact. You can choose to, to allow the viewer to view the documentation, or you can choose to keep it totally private. You can also, within artifacts, create custom family sharing circles. I didn't get a chance to show you all this in the live demo, just based on our time constraints, but it is a great feature if you're planning a family reunion. Think of your sharing circles as essentially group chats, but for your artifacts, for your stuff and story. But there's many ways to share privately within artifacts to ensure that your family gets the story and understands the history of what you and your family has been through. And last but not least, Share the love and your sources. This is the documentation section. Again, you have undoubtedly a ton of resources. You can attach them into your, into your artifact, from family trees to original research papers. You name it, you can attach it to ensure if someone is inheriting great-grandma Anderson's rocking chair, 
you can attach the family tree to show this is where your great grandma Anderson is in our family tree. So when you're sitting in the rocking chair, there is no doubt of which branch the family this came from and the history and the stories behind that. So with that, I do want to conclude the presentation with a couple of our quick start resources. Again, these are all available to you, all completely free of charge. And these slides will be given to Elizabeth at the end of the presentation. So you can, they're all linked, but you can also find all these on our website. There's the genealogy checklist to help give you some inspiration as you go through your family history and tell your story. There's our quick start guide that will help you if you ever have questions about using the platform. It's a great resource, step-by-step -step guide. And then of course, we do have our own YouTube channel, which offers dozens of short how-to videos. If you're ever stuck on, wait a sec, I want to use the at symbol to connect the stories, but I forget how to do it. Or wait a sec, how do I view my timeline? It's all right there. So with that, I'm going to stop screen sharing and I'm happy to take Q&A. Thank you, Heather. That was a really awesome presentation. Um, super, super interesting. I don't see any questions in the Q&A as of right now because you covered it so well. <laughs> um, but you guys asked questions. Um, if you want to show more of the website, you know, we could do that. Sure. People always I like to see more. Yeah, I can do that. I can go back to this. A screen share and show a couple more items. Yeah. Let's do this. I want to show, um, since I did build this in honor of my mother, I want to show one of my favorite artifacts. I'm going to quickly search here. So again, her history and legacy is cooking. Her love language was cooking. I want to show you how you can, I keep saying connect the dots. I want to connect the dots and show you an artifact that I did in honor of her. So my family, part of our family history and heritage, we have a cookie recipe we cook during the holidays. And this was, I called them moon cooks, which is a very long story of why I called them moon cooks, but they're really just sugar cookies. They came from Betty Crocker. But I made this artifact. You can see a very long story about it. I showed my daughter in the artifact how to roll out the dough, so what the thickness should be. I also included the original teaspoons and the original cookie cutters that my mother used, that her mother used before her. So these are items where against things happen to be. My daughter might look at these and be like, oh my gosh, they're not even good enough for goodwill. Mom. Like they're going in the <laughs> trash, like don't know what they are, but they're now part of this artifact. And my entire family knows something happens to me. This is one of my most prized possessions are these cookie cutters, these teaspoons, and my mother's original cookbook. Um, so it again, looks very well loved. <laughs> yes, exactly. Very yeah. well loved. Even my little doodles in the corner. Yeah. Um, but you can see how you tie it, you tie it together to tell the story. So it's not just a cookbook. It's not just these teaspoons, but combined, they tell a piece of our family history and our traditions. Um, so it is one of my personal, one of the questions I usually get is what is your favorite artifact? Yeah. You this is, I think one of my favorite artifacts I've ever made. And one of the really fun parts about this is that, of course, I do include the recipe down here at the end. I used to, before artifacts, every holiday, I would have dozens of aunts and cousins and even my own brothers would be like, so what's mom's recipe again? When I made the artifact a couple of years ago and I shared it with everyone, I no longer got asked, what's the recipe again? Because it was so easy to find. Everyone yeah. had it. And it made my life during the holidays a little bit more sane. I also want to show a couple of resources we have on our website. So if you go to artifacts.com, you go to our inspiration tab. I mentioned the checklist, one of our resources. If you scroll down here to our free checklist, I've included the genealogy one as the handout, but we also have a bunch of others. If you're someone who you want to really work on your legacy, telling your story, this is a great checklist of items kind of to go through an artifact. Another one is old photos. Photos can't talk, and I'm sure you all have a ton of old photos. Again, if you gave yourselves homework of one photo a week and you chose to artifact it, hmm. think of that rich history you'd leave for your family. You know, we like to say, don't become the next generation's genealogy research project. Yeah. You are in control today. Tell yeah. the story, share the history. We do. We have a couple questions that just came in that are interesting. The first one, somebody was asking, 
Well, they were saying that they don't have a cell phone or pictures on the computer. Can Is this something they can still use? Yes. Yes, yeah. you can. Um, you do not need a cell phone to use this, to use artifacts at all. In fact, a lot of local libraries, I'm sure Allen County Public Library has, oftentimes you can scan items. They have the ability to book a scanner, go in and scan maybe an old family photograph or even scan a, maybe a, a memento or a document or something that has a story behind it, maybe an old card or letter. And then once you have that scan, you can send it to yourself via email and then from there, you can make your artifact and share with your family, share with yeah. folks that want to know. So you don't, although there's a lot of kind of features and, and the cell phone makes it yeah. easy, you certainly don't need a cell phone to do this. Yeah. If it isn't easier for you, then you're not going to do it. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And there's one thing I should note. So we are, I think I like jumped over the introduction piece, but as a company, we are partnered with AARP. And we've worked with them to ensure that our website and our mobile apps are fully accessible, which is one of the reasons we have the talk to text feature. Maybe if you, if typing is hard, if you have arthritis or vision impairments, you can talk to text. If you are, you know, you're so sick and tired of buttons, you can't find. That's why our buttons are big and bold and green. Yeah. We tried really hard to make it hopefully very easy to use. And then the other thing, because of our security and privacy background, it's safe to click. Um, you yeah. can read all of our, you know, our T's and C's and privacy statement, but we don't sell anyone's information. We don't use any third parties. We've built the platform from the ground up. We don't use any open source code. It's custom built. We have our patent. So if you're worried about clicking around, yeah. exploring, like what happens if I click this? The answer is nothing bad. You can always go back to where you started from. If you, even if you try, you can always delete your account and you'll never hear from us again. Yeah. And we've tried to very hard to build technology for good to help families. That's great. Speaking of families, the next question, well, this person says, say I'll be dividing our facts between three children in the future. Is there a way to sort into a list based on beneficiary or is there some sort of inventory list? Yep. So there's a couple ways of doing the sorting and the searching. The easiest way is probably make a custom tag. You know, I'll just use my daughter. Her name's Hazel. Hazel mm -hmm. gets this. And you can quickly with a click button sort and everything that she's going to get pops up if you use that tag for her. You can also for your entire collection or individual artifacts, you can download at any point. And I'm still screen sharing, so I'm gonna go into here to my collection. When you download, you if you download to the Excel spreadsheet option, right here, download my artifacts. If I click this option, if I click Excel spreadsheet, you're gonna get a fully searchable, sortable, maneuverable Excel spreadsheet. So you could easily sort by beneficiary. You could sort by even one level up beneficiary. You could sort by sell, donate, bequeath, keep in the family. So there's lots of ways to sort, search, and manipulate the data. But if you're looking for the easiest way, and in fact, what we do with our, our family and our stuff, we just have custom tags, one for each of our kids. And we, we make it, we make it super simple. And then of course we, we share it with them too. Um, so they know what they're getting. <laughs> they can tell yeah. us like, Hey mom, not sure I want that. Yeah. That's, that's a better method than, than my mother's method, which was, I was visiting for the holidays and <laughs> she gave me a stack of post-its and said, put post-its on what you want, which yeah, I'm like, this is a little dark, but okay. <laughs> we have heard that from so many people and what, the other thing we then hear typically is, well, I put my post-it on the back of, you know, like the needlepoint cushion. And then my cousin came through and she took my post and put yeah. her post. And it starts yes. to family feud. Yeah. And yeah. you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, somebody did want to know, like, you know, what is the price? Is there a free trial? Yeah, of yeah. course. So you can go to our services. Our membership plans are right here. Your first five artifacts are always free. And it's not a trial. It's forever. You have five cool. free artifacts. For those of you who know Matt Paxton, who's the star of Quarters and PBS Legacy List, he is on our advisory board. And if you watch Legacy List, it's typically your five items that tell your family history and story. 
So with us, with artifacts, five are always, always free. You do not have to enter any credit card information, nothing. You, there is no barrier to telling and sharing your legacy list with your family. If you decide you love artifacts, we have two plans, um, already light, already unlimited. I will say that 95% of our members go with the unlimited plan because it gives you four accounts for the same price. They're all unlimited accounts and you can choose who gets the accounts. So um, it may be if you're a matriarch or the patriarch and family and you have children, you can get them accounts. Maybe you want to artifact your siblings, you can get the sibling account. It's really up to you who gets the accounts, but that is 95% of our members go with unlimited because it gives you four accounts for a single price, all unlimited artifacts, um, makes it really easy to artifact together as a family. Very cool. Great. Well, thank you so much, Heather, for such an awesome presentation. It, it reminds me a lot of, artifacts reminds me a lot of something that the Tenement Museum used to do. I used to work at the Tenement Museum in New York. So I love it, that museum. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a great museum. They did something called Your Story, Our Story. And when I was applying to work there years ago, we were required to upload a picture of an artifact and tell the story and it it has to do with immigrate your family's immigration story or migration story or refugee story a lot of people would put pictures of food because everyone loves food a lot of people would put pictures of you know menorahs maybe the quran like all kinds of things so it's like that on steroids for the average person so i like it it's it's very cool yeah, we had um, I'll tell a fun little fun story. We first tested this. It's called beta. When you test a new tech product, and we invited 125 family, friends, and complete strangers, and we had we planned to run it for three months, um, but after six weeks we stopped because everyone said, "Oh my gosh, can I like when can I share this with my family?" And when you're in beta, you're not allowed yeah. to share. It with like it's just you. Um, and we had one of, we asked all of our beta members for feedback and we had several who came back to us and was like, this is amazing. It's like a personal museum to like humanity or yeah. we had a book that was like, this is more interesting than like going to the Smithsonian because this is my family and my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and we thought that was kind of cool. It's, you do get to build your own private collection and tell your story on your own terms. That's awesome. That's great. So I see we are just about out of time and we're out of questions as well. So thank you again, Heather. And thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, if you would like a copy of the chat, you know, please send us an email. I will send out an email after the presentation with the slides to everybody. So stay tuned for that. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Thank you all for tuning in and have a great afternoon.